Models like this spaghetti are very hard, if not impossible to make. The reason for that is we have all of these curves that somehow have to not intersect and we can't model that. The only way is to run like a physics simulation. But it turns out that's not the case. Here's the algorithm. I'm gonna start off with a bowl like shape, turn this into a volume where I can use a random velocity grid. Doesn't matter what that is. And then calculate the curl of it, which is guaranteed to be divergence free. If I put a bunch of points in this bowl and then add vec them, move them through this curl field, the traces, the paths that they generate are guaranteed to not intersect. Let's start. To make the bowl, I'm going to start with a UV sphere that I need to cut in half. I have a node exactly for this, absolutely for free on cgmatter.com. I need to go up and down on the z-axis. Let's make that a bit higher resolution. Now, to get the curl of a vector field, whatever that means, I first of all need to turn this into a volumetric or a grid. Mesh to grid, specifically a density grid. If we view this, you can treat it as a volumetric, right? Take the voxel size, bring it down even more. But I do not want a density grid. I want a vector, which can be described by something like a noise texture. Before continuing, let me just make this a node group called the bowl. Unfortunately, you can't just take this and say, make it a grid. It's a color field in this case, field to grid. And this will let me take any field, including a color, whatever that may be, and turn it into a vector grid. The only requirement is we need to add a topology. This topology is kind of the overall data structure that this exists in. If we're using this density grid, it's also going to be the topology because I want to apply it to the same volumetric or grid. If I turn off normalization, you can see that a bit better. We get this vector grid that is on the bowl. I could change anything about this and it will calculate on the fly. Now, the fact that I told you is that if you take the curl, that is something called a divergence-free grid. I made a tutorial about that for kind of fluid simulation. You can watch that. It's essentially the same thing. If I take a bunch of points at different parts of this bowl, each one's going to represent a spaghetti strand. And then for each of these, I kind of move it through this vector field, kind of tracing out a piece of spaghetti. They are guaranteed to not intersect. That is is the big deal. We're going to need some points to put in our grid, distribute points in grid, plug in your density grid over here, which is going to give us a bunch of points that are confined inside of this volume inside of this grid. But I don't want to sample them randomly, although I could. You know, what, let's sample them randomly. I just want to make sure they don't start off very close together. Merge by distance. This will let me just combine ones that are super close together. So before and after. Let's take all of this, turn it into a node group that we output the curl of, maybe our like curl field or something like that. And then for these points, which I'm going to turn into vertices, and you'll see why in a second. So points to vertices. On this, I can run a simulation, which means I'm going to do something again and again and again. In this case, it's going to be growing the spaghetti. The reason I did this points to vertices is to take a point like this one and then trace its trajectory. What I can do is at each step, I can extrude it. So now it's over here. And then I look at the curl field. It says, okay, go this way. So I extrude the tip. I look again. It says extrude that way. And I do this again and again and again until it traces something out. So let's also clean this up. This can be like our vertices, making sure that we can control stuff like the density. Like I said, for the simulation zone, I'm going to extrude a mesh, which is going to do nothing because it's extruding faces. Particularly, I want to extrude vertices and then all of a sudden, whoa, it's tracing something. As for what direction it does it in, that's what this offset is. I can say, oh, go to the left or go upwards or whatever. This is what I'm going to use this curl field for, which really is a grid. I should really get used to saying grid. I'm going to sample the grid. This lets us go back from a grid to a field. So we had field to grid. Now we have grid to field, basically. I'm going to sample our vector curl field, which will now output a direction at every single point in space. I connect this to the offset. I view this, and now they're going in random-ish directions. You can see they're going a bit too far. So for the offset, you can either use this delta time, or I also have a delta time node that exists, again, for free on my website. Now notice, if I go through this kind of timeline, I don't know why I say kind of, it's going to run this simulation, but it's going to get really really, really slow. Like we're actually at 17 million vertices. This only looks like 300. What, what, what do you mean 17 million? What's happening is we have a bunch of points, in this case, 133. We extrude them. So it doubles them to 66, but then it keeps doing this doubling instead of only extruding the tips. I only want to take the tip and extrude it. I don't want to take all of these and keep doing the same thing. This tutorial is sponsored by boot.dev, which is a new kind of sponsor and a welcome one because they offer an interactive way to learn to code. How do you learn how to code by making projects? That is what boot.dev teaches you. In this case, I'm learning Python. Spoilers, because I'm going to give you some answers. Fix your first bug. Players are gaining health when attacked instead of losing it. Bug is on line three. So your end health is your start health, not plus, but minus. Sword damage. Run. Submit. Next. Print statement works like this. You put a string inside the print statement. We need you to greet new players. Print the following text. Print. What string? This string. Run. Submit. Next. No more, no more answers for you. This way it actually gets ingrained. You got to move. You don't get bored. If you get stuck, which you won't because you're so smart, but if you get stuck, bottom left corner, AI 
AI tutor. It knows the context of what you're doing, so it can actually help you with what you're doing. Now, for actually trying it out, one, 30-day money-back guaranteed it. No question, they just give it to you. But second of all, all the stuff, all the content you can read and watch for free. Once you get a membership, you get to actually go through it, run the code, submit the code, move on, and actually, like, interact with it. Listen, you gotta get in on this, so go to boot.dev, and I'm gonna hook you up because you can use this code, QR code, all of this, code is CG Matter, to get 25% off your entire first year on an annual plan, so check it out. It's cool. I only want to take the tip and extrude it. I don't want to take all of these and keep doing the same thing. Only extrude a certain selection, and that selection is going to be the top or the tip of each path, making sure that at the beginning, all the points are considered active, just to begin with. So all of these points are going to exist in our selection that we're going to be allowed to extrude, but then only the new tips are allowed to be extruded again and again and again. And now if I hit play, you can see it's going in real time. You can see it's kind of low resolution. The reason for this is every single step, it goes quite far, which means it's also not very accurate. Take the offset, which right now is dependent on our frame rate, DT, and I am going to, let's say, divide it, make it smaller by five. Now, when I simulate this, it's going to be smoother and grow much um, slower, is what I'm trying to say. I can view this using the tube node I made, never this monstrosity that came in 5.0. I'm going to use my own tube node that, again, is free. It's going to say, oh, this isn't a curve, which is true. It's just a bunch of points that we extruded. It's a mesh. I'm going to say it indeed is a curve. Now we have a tube that I'm going to make thin. And now we can see, again, the big deal. If we even look closely, none of these are going to intersect, especially as I make that DT, it's offset smaller on every frame. Make it two times smaller, divide by 10. And you're seeing that, you know, it's working. However, there aren't many spaghetti strands to begin with. So once the simulation's done and it stops growing, it's going to get to the state where there's kind of like a lot of empty space. And that is exactly dependent on our number of vertices. So we could take this and increase the density, which is fine. However, we are confined by this merge by distance. No matter how many points I make, it's going to take nearby ones and kind of join them and kill the others, right? Inside of this, I'm going to add a distance kind of input or parameter, where now if I increase the density to 50, you can see it doesn't get much bigger. But when we decrease the distance, now they're allowed to spawn much closer. If I redo our simulation, let's see what that gives us. A much more full bowl of spaghetti. The only intersections you're seeing here is just an artifact of how thick these spaghetti strands are. So if I take the radius, divide by two, you can see, in fact, they were never intersecting at all. I'll make the radius 0.01, which to me indicates that I can kind of bring up the distance, I think. I can then take this, whatever it generates, and put it inside of a bowl. Remember, we have this bowl generation to begin with. And I want to take this and turn it into an actual bowl with thickness and whatever. And you can see it's a bunch of quads, maybe some triangles at the pole down here. But very specifically, this big face right here is an n-gon. I'm going to use my is n-gon node, delete geometry, specifically the faces where there is a n-gon. That is not going to work. Why is it not going to work? It's checking is the face with index 0 and n-gon, whatever. I want to check every single face. So each one looks at its own index. And now it got rid of the top. Finally, I want to give this some thickness. So I'm going to run my solidify extrude node, which will very easily give us some nice thickness. Spaghetti, thickness, join them. You, you got your ramen. Now, before committing to the simulation and baking, I do want to show you that we can do extra processing on these curves before we turn them into a tube. Something like running a fillet curve, which you can think of as a smoothing operation. Limit the radius. Go to the poly mode, which will let us pick how many fillet points do we want. Want. So before, after, looking a bit jank. If you don't even want to mess with this as an issue, I do have a node called, I think it's called Merge Curve, which should just take care of this. Before, after, just adds a bit of smoothing. For the most part, it really is contained within this bowl, unless I make it a little too thin. Here we have our bowl. We do a bunch of stuff to it. I'll call this a node group that is going to be like thick bowl solidified. Y-E-D. I cannot spell for shit. Solidified bowl. This is just our simulation logic. The only thing I want as a input is this like divide by 10. And now we're back to a point where this is fairly legible. I want to get rid of these short spaghettis. So I'm just going to go to when this is a curve, I'm going to delete certain geometry, what geometry, certain splines or curves, and that's going to be dependent on the length. Now, you might think that this is like, oh, this is a job for the curve length. However, this is going to output a single number, the length for every spaghetti combined. I want to look at them individually, spline length. Okay, this will give us the length of each spline individually. I can check where is this length less than some number in which case we call or we delete. As I slowly increase this, we're getting rid of only the short ones, which is great because what we want to do is we want to make our simulation as simple as possible and then just do post-processing instead of trying to make our simulation not even generate these. Take all of this curve logic. I can call this something like spaghetti.
T, where the only things I really want to control is maybe this like threshold, maybe this tube radius. We're pretty much done. The only thing left is to pick some numbers that look good. Just to kind of review, we started off with this bowl we made. We turned this into a density grid that allowed us to spawn a bunch of vertices. Additionally, we computed this curl field that we're going to say, take those points that we made and advec them, move them across this, you know, special field. We take whatever this makes, turn it into spaghetti, add the bowl back in. I think you get kind of the fundamental idea here. So I'm glad you, you did that.